This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. TV networks that took next to no interest in the trial of Army whistleblower Bradley Manning showed up to hear the verdict. But some reporters mischaracterized the very leaks at the heart of the story. On NBC Nightly News July 30th, Jim Miklaszewski discussed the collateral murder video of a 2007 helicopter attack in Iraq. In a pre-trial statement to the court, Manning admitted he leaked this classified video of an Apache helicopter attack in Iraq that killed a number of insurgents and two innocent civilians. But the video doesn't show the killing of insurgents. There's a strike on a group of men, ostensibly because one has what appears to be a weapon. Then a second attack on a car that arrived at the scene to assist a wounded Reuters journalist. The driver of the car was killed and his two children were injured. The third strike was a Hellfire missile fired into a building. It is unknown who was killed in that attack. A reporter affiliated with WikiLeaks claims to have interviewed the owner of that building. He says a number of members of his family were killed. So where does Miklaszewski get the idea that the attack was mostly on insurgents? Well, that was the Pentagon's cover story before the release of the video. And NBC's Pentagon stenographer is sticking with it. Oh, and here's the close of the segment. Jim Miklaszewski at the Pentagon reporting on this widely watched case tonight. Jim, thanks. Widely watched? Not on NBC. Sometimes a headline says it all, like this one from the New York Times. The elevation of an ideal center is corporate media's old faithful. The problem is that the center doesn't mean what you might assume it does, especially in the context of U.S. public opinion. When journalists call for Democrats to move to the center, they invariably mean to move to the right. That seems to be the case here, too. The first issue is lowering the interest rate on student loans. That's a step supported by two-thirds of respondents in a June poll, but here it's a potential step away from the center. Another example, some Democrats resisting Obama's plans to cut Social Security and Medicare. If that's a move away from the center, that would be a big surprise to the overwhelming majority of Americans who want to maintain those programs. Then there's a plan to restore Glass-Steagall limits on the banking industry. That's a challenge to what the New York Times calls the centrist consensus on high finance. But what is centrist about allowing big banks to get even bigger? Recent polls show that, in reality, regulating the banks is really popular. Just keep that in mind when you hear pundits celebrating the center. Their definition probably isn't yours, or Merriam-Webster's for that matter. And finally, a recent Washington, D.C. City Council bill to raise wages at large retail stores seemed mostly directed at Walmart, since that company has plans to open six stores in the city. And that brought out some media sympathy. No, not for the workers. The bill would require Walmart to pay a living wage of $12.50 an hour. To hear the company tell it, that would be a burden that would tear the whole project down. And a discussion on MSNBC's Morning Joe on July 22nd saw most of the panel take the company's side. Here's host Joe Scarborough. Well, I disagree with the concept of actually uh, sing signaling, signaling out Walmart and telling them what they're going to have to pay their employees, Walmart should be able to make that decision uh, based on their own economic uh, realities. CNBC reporter Brian Schachtman said it would theoretically be possible for Walmart to pay its workers a living wage, but... If they had to increase their wages like that in all their businesses, it would pretty much wipe out their profits. Well, that's hard to figure. Companies can change their prices or even except less profit. And then we heard from former Democratic congressman and current Morgan Stanley executive Harold Ford. He stressed this familiar company talking point. And they also argued that the products they sell at Walmart are more affordable for families up and down the income spectrum. You might not guess that some of those down spectrum folks work at Walmart and still require public assistance like food stamps. Co-host Mika Brzezinski was the only one suggesting that the largest retailer in the world could afford to pay workers a little more. And research cited by journalists like David Sirota show increasing wages at Walmart would have a tiny effect on those famous prices. Maybe next time we could have a debate about Walmart with a little more, well, 
debate. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.